Hey everyone, Jared VK3BL here, and wow, it feels like a long time since I've been able to make a video. Um, sometimes it feels like I've just been keeping my head above water. <laughs> I've just had a shower, sorry for the silly joke. Um, but no, in all seriousness, I've had family commitments. Um, my youngest son, he's uh, six years old, he's got autism, and um, he's having trouble adjusting, I guess, to the second semester of primary school. So we've just been having to spend a bit of time with him and... Um, uh, it's been a bit of a stressful fa uh, family situation in general, but um, it's sort of taken the focus off the video. But that said, a lot of stuff has been happening and um, I want to fill you all in on a bit of what's been going on and um, what's coming up. So the first thing I really should do um, is thank uh, Rediverse and uh, Terry uh, especially um, for sending me this DMR radio. Now... It's a Chinese DMR radio. Um, it's, I believe, called the Islands HD1. They sent it to me for a review, and the specs look awesome. Now, the, what differentiates this particular DMR radio from the others, such as Motorola's or um, some of the other Chinese ones, even some of Redivis's own products, is that um, this one is made specifically with the ham radio operator in mind. So uh, I know in the DMR world, and this is really should be called, hey guys, teach me DMR because I don't know a, th a thing. Um, but I know code plugs are a big thing in the DMR world. Well, with this radio, just using the, um, the buttons on the front and maybe a little bit of Googling to see what the rooms are and, and all that sort of thing, all of those sort of settings are, you can actually get the radio on air talking to people just using the buttons. You don't actually have to connect it to the computer. And I successfully did that. And um, I must say, uh, it's sort of given me some sort of an appreciation as to why folks like DMR. Um, the community was really friendly. Uh, the first person I spoke to, they said, oh, well, you don't have this setting right. Uh, so that's why not everyone can hear you. Um, and then they filled me in on what that setting was. And um, yeah, it was just, it was really friendly. But not only that, the voice quality was fantastic. And I must say, and I'm not joking at all here, and this is, this is, this is actually a, um, a, a, a pet peeve of mine. The audio quality on this guy, the Islands HD1, is better than the Asu FT2D. Um, I think, yeah, the FT2D. Not only is it better um, in terms of the codec, I actually think DMR sounds a little bit nicer maybe than C4FM, a little bit less robotic, but this radio has a weird hiss. It's got this weird hiss in the, um, in the speaker, whereas this just sounds clean and beautiful, and it doesn't matter whether you're using it on a repeater um, or whether you're using it, um, like, on a, sorry, on, a, on an analog repeater, whether you're using it on FM, whether you're using it on DMR, it sounds beautiful. Um, and I must say, um, I'm impressed. The menu structure, it's basic, but it, um, you know, it, it's simple. Um, this radio actually has GPS, but it's, unfortunately the, the amateur DMR standard doesn't allow, well, it doesn't support GPS. So that was a bit of a, bit of a downer for me. Um, I really wanted to try that. Um, but uh, one thing I have realised is that even though I can get this up and going in an emergency on the DMR network, I do need to build up a code plug so that I can have all the contacts in here and get the most out of the DMR network. It is it's quite a bit more complicated and when I say complicated, I mean um, uh, fully featured, I guess, than um, the ASO system fusion. So I do want to build up a code plug. Guys, let me know in the comments what I need to do, what I should be thinking. As I said, teach me DMR. I don't know much about it. I just know that this handheld, um, I'm very thankful, one, to have been given the opportunity to review it, but two, um, is very intuitive. And, you know, if you were to just have one radio in your, I guess, go bag for DMR, this would probably be the one because you can program it on the fly. And not only that, it's waterproof um, for 30 minutes. I think it's a meter for 30 minutes or, or something like that. It's something insane. Um, and so once we've done a bit more review, a bit more of on-air testing, um, 
my youngest son, the one who's having a bit of trouble at school, <laughs> one of the things we, we're going to do is I'm going to get him to drop it into a bucket of water and we're going to test that out for you. So, um, yeah, just wanted to quickly say thanks, I guess, to uh, uh, Cherry and Redivus for sending this uh, to Rate My Radio. Um, we are very, very impressed with it. Certainly Ben, um, the other half of uh, Rate My Radio, really wants to give give it a go. He's very big into DMR, uh, well, not, not DMR so much, but um, digital modes and um, repeater operation, that sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to um, finishing, you know, sort of reviewing this, doing some on-air demos, and then passing it around to Ben for a more extensive analysis. And, and he'll let you know as well. So let us know in the comments what you want to know about this radio. Um, the battery life has been good. I know one someone else commented that they thought the clip might be a little bit too easy for the battery to fall out, but you know, uh, I don't think it is too bad. Um, the waterproofing's nice, but I guess just to round up and finish things off, what I'll do. Now somewhere in here, ah, so this is my previous, I guess foray into the Chinese radio market. Now we all have one, let's admit it. This is a Baofeng UV82, um, I don't know whether it was a UV, 82L, there you go, instead of R, it's an L. Now once again, very nice um, commercially focused radio like the Redivus, but I just wanted to give you a comparison. You know, the Redivus is a substantially bigger radio. Um, it's got a substantially bigger battery, so I dare say the battery claims are going to be a lot more accurate than you get with some of the outrageous Baofengs. Um, but it just, it hasn't, it, it's got a, I guess, I guess what I'm really trying to say is it, it's a step forward. It's not like the first generations of Chinese radios where they were small and if they were big, they didn't feel solid. This really does feel solid and um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you uh, for the chance to review it. Really, really sorry we haven't been able to do more on it yet. But um, uh, once again, thanks to Redivus and Cherry for sending it our way. And um, thanks again to the, for the, the Australian, the VKDMR community for making it uh, easy just to plug in some numbers, get online, um, you know, get told, hey, you've got to go put this setting in and just get working. And yeah, it's going to be going to be a lot of fun with the code when I've got the code plug in. Will I give up my Asus system fusion? Well, um, I think it's complimentary probably. I think I think DMR is one of those things where it's nice to have it's sort of like a, a worldwide standard. Um, and it's something that everyone can sort of, I guess, have in their in their go bag. So anyway, I'll, I'll wrap this up um, and we'll talk more about this radio later. But you know, I did just, just did want to show you, you know, that was previously sort of the commercial focus bow thing from, you know, a few years ago. And um, this is what we've come to. And yes, I will do some tests and make sure the transmitter is clean and that sort of thing using um, the SDR plays. So we will get to that. But uh, do tell us, what do you want to know about this radio in the comments? And please, please teach me DMR. This is Jared of VK3BL saying 73 and thank you.